you're on a Mac, now we're going to walk through how to install Rails on your local machine. And just like we did in PC, we're going to walk through three different ways that you could do this. Uh, the first is going, going to installrails.com, and this is going to give you a true step-by-step -step guide. So if I click Start, and I could also do this on PC or Linux, but for this one I'm going to do Mac. Click on Mac and then it's gonna walk you through every single step, including finding the version of uh, Mac you're in, and you can simply follow along and uh, get exactly the, uh, the different parameters you have. So for this one, I have 1010.4, .10 and so I could do something like that, and then it will give me all the instructions I need, uh, including some things that uh, it would be very tedious to go step by step through, such as uh, installing Xcode and doing some different things that a lot of the other tutorials uh, either skip over or miss out on. So uh, this is going to be the most uh, I've gone through this one before. It's a most comprehensive guide to installing Rails on your Mac. Uh, I'm definitely a big fan of it. Uh, now, one thing to know with this also is that this is specific to your different version. So uh, that's the reason why I don't want to walk through exactly how to install Rails directly because uh, one, I already have it installed on my system, so there would be a lot of things that either would not work because they would be duplicating what's already there, but the other thing is if you're watching this a year from now, then the versions are going to change and the different things you need to do in order to install this would also change and then it wouldn't be a very helpful tutorial. But by using a tool like this that's constantly updated, then you're able to go through, have a step-by-step -step guide how to uh, install it and then you'll be good to go. That's if you want to follow this type of guide. If you want a system that does it all for you, you can go to railsinstaller.org, and this is that engine yard project, and go here and simply install, uh, depending on which version of uh, Mac you have, uh, installed that here. Uh, for the type of version I have on my computer. This wouldn't work very well because I already have a version that's past these two. Uh, but if you are working on 10.7, 10.8, or 10.6, you could use these and it'll install all the different items that you need there. The third option, and this is the option that we did on the PC side uh, that works great, is by using Nitrous. And uh, if you did not watch the PC tutorial, then uh, all Nitrous is, is it's a cloud-based development environment. So it does all the hard work for you, and they also do have a, a free version. If you click sign up and you go through the steps, they do have a free option. So even though it's moved from Nitrous Beta to Nitrous Pro, they still do have a free option that you can use to develop on, so you don't have to pay for it. Uh, it's a great tool, and if you do not want to install uh, Rails directly on your system for some reason, or if you want to have a development environment across multiple computers, this is a great option. So uh, there you go, you have three different ways of installing Rails on your system. Now one other thing, uh, if you're on a Mac, one thing that I want to do is I also want to have a different database. Uh, Rails by default on a Mac comes with the SQLite database. However, that's not really one of my favorites to use uh, because it's incredibly lightweight and it's, uh, but not in the good sense. It, it doesn't have a lot of the type of features that you want in a production database. And another issue is uh, you can't run SQLite on Heroku. So you'd have some issues. Uh, you may have a database set up that uh, works great locally and as soon as you push it to production it may break and it's because Postgres has some stricter rules uh, and it's also a lot better from a performance perspective. So uh, I'm going to show you a couple ways to install Postgres. The first way is the way that I did it the way I have it on this machine right here, and it's to go to postgresapp.com and simply click download. Now, once you do this, you'll have an executable application and you can run it. If you look up top, you can see right here, this little icon shows if you have it running or not. 
I have mine uh, because I use it literally every single day. I have mine start up at login. Uh, you may run into some errors if you do not start up at login and you forget to start it up. Uh, if you're running Postgres as your local database, then uh, it would not, uh, it wouldn't let you run your Rails application. So I do this because uh, in the past I've forgotten to do it and uh, it, it throws a little bit of a weird error. So this way it makes it really easy. If for any reason you have any issues installing Postgres this way, uh, Homebrew also has a great option. So if you go to uh, brew.sh, then you can install Homebrew. And what Homebrew does is it's a way of being able to control different packages on your computer. And Postgres is one of those different packages. So simply go through these different steps for installing Post, uh, for installing first Homebrew, and then after that, then you can install uh, Postgres uh, just by going and adding uh, brew install Postgres uh, command on there. Uh, and this has all the steps for it, and then um, the next, uh, after you've done it, if you want to get Postgres installed, uh, you come to this website right here. And I'm going to put this in the show notes so that you have it. And this shows you how to install Postgres uh, on a Mac with Homebrew and then also Lunchy. And so this is going to give you all the steps for doing it on the command line. And it also has some other things such as being able to show you how to create or upgrade a database. Uh, this gives you a very step-by-step -step version. Uh, however, uh, I think you'll be able to... Uh, for the most part, everybody, everyone that I've worked with on this has used the Postgres app and it's worked very nice for them. Especially if you're just getting into Rails, this does a lot of the hard work for you. So that's for installing Postgres. Now, another thing that you may find is that you will wanna use multiple versions of Ruby in your applications or with multiple applications. So right here, if I do RVM, uh, oops, sorry. RVM list, then it will show you all the different versions of Ruby that I can use on my machine. I have everything from Ruby 2.0 all the way up through 2.5. I just upgraded my uh, to a new MacBook Pro a few weeks ago. My old MacBook actually had uh, Ruby versions even quite a bit further than back here, but uh, none of the applications I'm currently working on uh, use anything prior to two. But what this means is if you you start using, say, a legacy application or a gem or something that uses a specific version of Ruby, RVM lets you control which uh, which Ruby version that you want to use and you can do it dynamically. So uh, by default, your system only will come with one version of Ruby, but you're going to want to have a few more than that. So uh, to, to install RVM, then you simply go to rvm.io slash rvm slash install. And this will guide you through exactly how to install RVM on your system. And like I said, this is not necessary. However, if you do not use this, then uh, you will be kind of limited because you're only gonna be able to use one version of, uh, of Ruby on your system. Uh, each one of these commands right here, uh, this is going to let you copy and paste and you can drag or you can paste it into the terminal and then these will automatically run. And you can see they have different versions for each one, uh, but this is, uh, some of these are gonna be just pretty straightforward. So for example, this one right here to install RVM, this is gonna be the main one that you'd wanna do. This installs the basic version. And then from there you can go install different versions of Ruby on the fly.